smell it. You can smell diesel as the trucks go by. You can smell people's mufflers as they go by. And you can smell trash when it's on the ground. And the rats get into it. Mm -hmm. What's to say you won't get bit or, or whatever. Asthma, it's killing people, it's killing our kids. If it ain't killing our kids, it's killing the elderly. This is South Baltimore. This is a story of putting money over people and industry over environment. This is a story of how a resilient community was birthed from the injustices they've been unfairly served. How community action can bring justice to an overlooked and disenfranchised community. South Baltimore communities such as Brooklyn and Curtis Bay have been reported as having some of the highest air pollution levels in the country, in a stark juxtaposition of surrounding communities such as Annapolis and Bethesda. South Baltimore is home to a tremendous amount of polluters, from multiple trash incinerators, to a landfill, oil refineries, and metal processing plants. The list goes on. This industry has plagued the community with some of the highest rates of asthma and cancer in the country and left little to be gained economically as one of the poorest counties in the state. Many residents are concerned for their health and the health of their loved ones, and many are left asking, why them? Some organizations have been working to change this, but much work remains to be done in the fight for environmental justice. So in the like, I don't know, 40s or so, it was it was really industrial. There was a lot of, um, I think like coal and um, it was really a thriving industrial community with a lot of jobs. Um, and then at some point, maybe in the 70s, um, a lot of those jobs left. They um, just went to other places. And so the people who had those jobs either went with it, leaving vacancies and blight, um, or stayed, but didn't have a job anymore. Um, so that was really the catalyst for the decline of the community. I know in Curtis Bay, which is a neighboring community to Brooklyn, where we are today, um, have had some of the highest asthma rates in the country. Um, it, historically, that zip code has, and again, I think it ties into the industry. I think it ties in. We're also, uh, in South Baltimore, we have one of the, one of, one of the landfills here in the state of Maryland, the Quarantine Road landfill. We're also kind of in between two incinerators. So again, I, I think, um, I don't know the science about how that directly impacts, but, um, but oftentimes people in South Baltimore feel like they've been dumped on, not just literally, <laughs> but figuratively, politically, um, but also literally. Um, so it, it's tough. Man, here the oil fineries. They destroy the water. They destroy the air. We gotta breathe it every day. I got oh, I smoke, but I've had emphysema before I even smoked heavy COPD. It's the air. It's what we breathe. And the companies don't care. They put a face on for for the people that matter. Now let's take a look at the data. At forty percent. Baltimore had more than double the asthma hospitalization rate of Maryland at 18%. In terms of poverty, Baltimore had more than double the Maryland average of 9% at 22%. In order to learn more about this, I talked with environmental justice expert, Dr. Sokovi Wilson. Uh, there's another definition I'd like to quote, is Dr. Bunyan Braun's definition. He's a professor of matters at University of Michigan. His definition is, environmental justice is when everybody can uh, enjoy life to their highest potential without experiencing the isms. Uh, environmental justice is when you have access to decent paying jobs, safe housing, good recreation, good schools, right? Access to health care. That's all social in terms of health. Uh, uh, communities free of crime, drugs, violence, and poverty. Social in terms of health. So environmental justice is talking about what we live, what we work, what we pray, what we play, and what we learn. Environmental justice is proximal, it's pocketbook, it's every day. It's not talking about the environment over there, you know, in, in, in Antarctica. It's the environment right outside my house, the environment right outside your house, the environment inside your house, the chemical agents you've been exposed to, the biological agents you've been exposed to, the physical agents you've been exposed to, your transit is part of your environment, house is part of your environment, 
Food is part of the environment, right? Healthcare is part of the environment. Economic uh, opportunity structure is part of the environment. Your educational system is part of your environment. That's what environmental justice is about. It's, it's inhumane. It's unethical. It's unethical for us to continue to say that we should be permitting facilities that release pollutions. Think about the trauma folks are going through when they see that pollution every day. Think about the trauma folks are going through when they talk about building another environmental insult. Think about the trauma folks go through when they see a, all these trucks that go through the communities and the mental health impacts. And the trauma they go through when they see a kid with another asthma attack. Or the trauma they go through, folks dying for cancer, like, wow, all the folks are dying for cancer. The trauma they go through when nothing's been done to improve air quality and water quality. That's traumatic. State sanctioned poison and state sanctioned violence. And not trying to be provocative. That's the reality of what you see in these communities. Whether it be Baltimore or another poor community, we should be doing the opposite. You have to prove to me why you should be able to pollute. You should be focused first priority on zero emissions. If you can't do zero emissions, you shouldn't be able to operate. That's the evolution of my thinking about our, our regulatory schema and our permitting process. That's how you put people in public health before profits and pollution. Any questions about the uh, Baltimore Compost Collective? I've had seven youth composters. All of them are working. Not only are we rescuing the food scraps from going into the landfills and the incinerators. This is why this program is so important. We are, before COVID, we was diverting between 400 and 500 pounds of food scraps from going into the landfills and the incinerators. Why is that so important? 80% of Baltimore City municipal trash can be recycled reuse or compost. So why are we burning trash? It's causing the residents here in Baltimore City $55 million worth of health damages. This neighborhood has the highest asthma and cancer rate. Even you said your dad was affected. So my job is to educate the affected. Uh, they put these incinerators in poor neighborhoods, uh, but the wind doesn't segregate or discriminate. We are the dumping ground for a coal company that sits across the street from a recreation center. We are dumping ground for two incinerators. One is a medical incinerator. John Hopkins gets money for uh, cancer and asthma research, cancer and asthma treatment, but they're burning their medical waste right in Curtis Bay, causing $55 million of health damages for the residents here. Why are we burning trash 2020? And then the notorious Will of Bresco claims that when you burn trash, it is renewable energy, when we know that's false. What it does when you burn trash, it creates a chemical called carbon dioxide. When you buy it, it creates methane gas. And once again, our children and our residents are dying because of this. So that's why I want to get the point out. People are dying. That's why you hear the passion in my voice, because I get to see the affected people. I'm an OSI fellow, and I go around and teach the affected youth of Curtis Bay about uh, composting. And when I go into class, I ask them two questions. One, what's your favorite fruit and vegetable? And two, are any of your family affected by asthma or cancer? When you get all of the students to raise their hand and say they have asthma or, and their family has cancer, we got a huge problem. And it's not worth money. We pay Brusco $11 million to burn trash a year. We only dedicate $900,000 to a recycling budget. Uh, when we, have, we had a large-scale compost facility, we could create four times more jobs than incinerator two times more jobs than the landfills. So why aren't we composting? So my goal and what I'm asking for Baltimore City is to pass the No Burn at Every Turn Act so we cannot get into another contract with an incinerator. Um, we are the only city in the country that has a landfill and an incinerator. We have these brilliant minds at John Hopkins. That incinerator is being used in double time because they're using these one-use gloves and mask and gowns and it's being burnt right here in Curtis Bay. Bresco is bringing Baltimore County and Howard County's trash into the city to be burned. Will Howard County or Baltimore County allow us to burn that trash? No. So once again, they take advantage of the poor and they affect the poor. So my job is to educate and, and uh, educate the affected youth of Baltimore City and the affected residents of Baltimore City. So I'm asking for everybody to put three waste stations in your house. One for your compost, 
One for your recycle, reuse, and one for your waste. We don't need this big, large, green trash can. If you recycle and reuse, you would need a five-gallon bucket for your waste. So Baltimore, we can do better. We can call for mandatory recycling. Education is how we're going to get to zero waste. Mandatory recycling, uh, curbside compost pickup. Give me the squeegee guys who are entrepreneurial geniuses who just need some support like young people need and create uh, through learning compost and learning entrepreneurial endeavor, teach them how to create their own entrepreneurial endeavor. They might not be composters, but they'll be entrepreneurial uh, trained a lot better than what they are now. So give me all those youth and create a large or mid-sized uh, compost facility and let's create jobs and create black gold for people to be able to grow their own food. So I'll say in the campaign here, and I'm gonna keep yelling it until we knock down that incinerator here in Curtis Bay and the one that sits across from m and Bake Stadium, uh, they only put them in poor neighborhoods, but the wind doesn't segregate or discriminate. So my saying is compost, learn so you don't have to burn, starve the incinerator, feed the soil, feed the community. Baltimore needs clean air. So that's what it's about for me, man.